Hey guys, welcome back to another part of Star Wars Battlefront. In the last part, we finished off the Separatist portion of the Clone Wars campaign. Prevent the Separatists from leaving the surface, we must. Concentrate all firepower on the remaining Techno Union ships. The rest of your units, to the Great Spire, send them. Right, so the Separatist army is amassing on Geonosis. Destroy them before they escape. Destroy the Techno Union ships to prevent the Separatists. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Okay, yeah, anyways. So this is the actual beginning of the Clone Wars, even though this entire campaign is called the Clone Wars. You never actually fight as a Separatist in the Clone Wars. So, yeah, anyways, we're jumping into the Battle of Genosis. I'm pretty sure this takes place at the later stages of the battle. Once most of the Separatists have retreated, I'm pretty sure, whatever. So anyways, my main strategy here is to use a pilot, jump on into the ATT, and just march off towards the Techno Union ships. It's a slow march, but it's definitely, and definitely, you can just tear those things to shreds once you get there. You can also use a gunship to get down to the Techno Union ships quickly, and you saw, it was really annoying trying to get those stupid units to get in. You have to stop moving, apparently. So let's try to snipe off this spider droid before we get too close. But anyways, yeah, you can also use the gunship to move in. But it takes a lot longer to take out the techno unit ships with that thing. So, uh, bear that fact in mind. And the best thing about the ATT in this, um aim is all showed off. They tear destroyers to shreds. Destroyer droids are so freaking annoying in this game. Maybe the annoyance is because in this game their shield doesn't have its own health bar. At least you can't see it. The second game they fixed that so you can actually tell how much of their shield you've worn down. And it just feels like in this game when I play as a destroyer it feels like my shield's there for like two seconds and it's gone. Then it feels like they've had their shield up for hours. But that's just, you know, probably not true, just a matter of perspective. Yeah, destroyer doors tear other infantry to shred, though obviously once their shield is down there, pretty much finished most of the time. It feels like the stupid computer shields regenerate a lot faster too, because I'll have like barely enough time to wear their health all the way down, it feels like, before their shield gets back up, but whatever. Uh, yeah. And also on hard, they're more accurate, so they will tear you to freaking shreds before you can do much. And I'm not really accurate with destroyers, which is why I didn't really use it. Oh, uh, look. I'm gonna get to take out that Hailfire droid, so that's good news. I like the detail they put into this battle. I mean, you just see the um, Trade Federation ship in the background, and the, I think it's called an Acclimator Cruiser or whatever. Chiefs by the Republic during the early stages of the Clone Wars, blah blah blah. So we're moving up on to the um, Techno Union ships. Also, this, I think this level, no, it doesn't. Actually, it does introduce mobile um, command posts. Basically, the ATTs will continually spawn units. So that's an advantage that you can drop units anywhere on the battlefield. The disadvantage is that when the command posts go out, obviously, you're at a disadvantage. Because, oftentimes, we'll have fewer than three command posts. Not always, but at some points, it does become a bit of a problem. So, advantages and drawbacks. And these mobile command posts are also just complete tanks. The only other mobile command post in this game is the at, -AT or Imperial Walker, which is a complete beast. There's especially, it's actually the AT-AT is only available on two missions, I, or two levels. I think the ATT, which is this, is only available on two as well. But, one of the levels which both these vehicles are available on, uh, the AT-AT completely rapes everything on that level. Obviously it's on Hoth, because, I mean, it's the Battle of Hoth, of course, is going to be there, but... Obviously, there's T-47 airspeeders, aka snow speeders, blah blah blah, I have so much Star Wars geekiness, whatever, that can trip up your walkers, and there's no such trace of them. 
on the other level with the ATAT, so they can be a bit of a problem. You don't really have to deal with them on this campaign at all, so don't worry about that. But, yeah, anyways, getting really off topic, we've almost taken out the Techno Union ships. Basically, what I like to do after I take them out is just walk around, go near the enemy command post because your units will spawn out, so it can really just standing around there, you take out enemy units and um, also your units will spawn out and slowly overwhelm the enemy's command post, so that's just a good strategy. Usually when I'm coming back around, I go this way and I'm about halfway there, units will start to just run into the spire and usually will overtake it. Every time, yeah, the spire is the main thing. It's one of the major command posts that takes longer to uh, remove from enemy control and capture, blah blah blah, whatever. So yeah, the game's really close right now. That's to be expected. Usually I'm actually down by a bit, because, you know, they still have three command posts, at the very least. Usually, at this point, sometimes you'll capture one of the bunkers. Sometimes they'll capture, um... The, I don't remember what the, it's called, but anyways, yeah. You should sometimes capture your one, um, not mobile or destructible command post. So, yeah. Usually, yeah, it's really close, only up by three minutes now, so I'm just checking out this map. Where, see, as you can see, I've lost the, yeah, it's the derelict, that's what it is, that's what I meant. Anyways, yeah, as you can see by the flashing greenish, the, the spire is slowly being captured by our side, but we've also lost the derelict, I think they captured it. But yeah, they just lost the spire, so... Basically, just the rest of the mission, just march around. We still got a long ways to go in this, so. Basically, just go near the bunkers, blah blah blah. Probably get out and capture the command post myself, just because it's a little quicker. Versus take care of that spider droid. Yeah, but anyways, the ATTs are usually the key to this battle, so. Separatists definitely have the firepower to take them out, especially because they have to, uh. Um, I think they're, I don't know what they're called exactly, but basically Geonosian starfighters that can fly around completely out speed on um, public gunships. So there's basically nothing the Republic really has to send out to uh, stop them. So they can really pest their ATTs. Not really a problem under the control of bots, but two human players team up. They can usually slowly wear down an ATT rather quickly. So, bear that in mind, I, it's not really going to affect you since this game, I don't think, has been online for a while. Anyways, not really a problem now, so I don't know why I'm talking about it. Yeah, that's a good strategy if you're playing this level with your friend as the Separatist. So, yeah. And now, we're starting to wear them down quite a bit, since um, they have one command post right now. Actually, they have one. So if we can head over there and capture that... East Bunker will really have this thing under control. So, yeah. Um, hmm. Maybe I should get out and run over there. Let's just march this thing closer. So, we have units spawning out of there, too. And it looks like we're holding them off from the derelict pretty well. So, only thing the other direction besides where we are right now from the derelict is, uh, is the. Um, Oh crap, there's a destroyer, so let's take that out with fire here. Okay. Let's jump down. And oh crap, what the f how do you get under there? Um yeah, let's stay in here, never mind. It was the only thing in the other direction is the forward command post, which is a destructible command post that cannot be captured. And also you can take over enemy vehicles, any enemy vehicles except mobile command posts for obvious reasons. So bear that in mind. So yeah, we've Got the map control right now. We're just tearing apart the reinforcements. So I'm just gonna go over here and help capture this thing. Okay. Alright, let's just jump back. ATT, take care of that dude. I mean, these things aren't invincible. Like, there are times where you just really gotta take out the enemy heavy weapons units and I haven't explained the units at all so far basically each side has five units for our mainstream for or like constant for each side basically we'll have the main soldier which is the one I've usually been using which just has the regular assault rifle 
Red fire, blah blah blah. Um, then you've got the heavy weapons unit, which is basically used for taking out vehicles. They have a rocket launcher, they can also lay mines to help take care of vehicles. And the rocket launchers are also very useful against swarms of enemies, so bear that in mind. Next you've got the sniper, which obviously is a sniper rifle. They also have a recon droid, which can call down an airstrike. In this, I mean, it's not like devastating and droid can easily be taken out beforehand, but it can thin out units decently well, a little bit better than grenade would, so yeah, there's that. Um, then the last constant unit for each side is the pilot, and there are um, differences between each unit on each side, especially with the pilot. The pilot for each side will have a different weapon. For the Republic, he's got that, like, I don't even know, electric shock or Tesla, some crap, I don't I don't even know, or Tesla, whatever, I don't know what to call it. Um, the Rebels have, the Rebel pilot has a shotgun, uh, the droid pilot, I think, has a grenade launcher, and the Imperial pilot, I think, has a grenade launcher, too. And they're not as strong as regular throwing grenades, but yeah, they can still do some damage, and battle's over, so hooray. Um, but yeah. And then the final unit for each side is dependent for that side. The Republic has a jet trooper, which flies around and has an EMP launcher, which is basically the Republic's grenade. EMP is effective on robotic units, of course. Um, the droids have the destroyer, of course. Um, the Empire has a jet trooper, which has a jet pack. It's more like a jump pack. He'll jump long distances, not the same as a jet pack. He can't just fly for short durations. And finally, the Rebels have a Wookiee smuggler, which has a bowcaster and blah blah blah, and takes more punishment. Can take more punishment. Anyways, yeah, we've taken care of Geonosis. Clone Wars have begun. You're gonna miss that whole begun the Clone Wars have thing from Yoda. Unfortunately, so whatever. Alright, let's save. Got some more stills. Blah, blah. Okay, so, um, let's. Do, do, wait, um, no, I don't want to do that. Alright, we've. Okay, let's move over here. Okay, we've captured Geonosis. So, the next part is the Separatists will attack Camino when we have to defend it. So, see you guys then. Adios.